devastating lethality. Dismounted infantry soldiers are vulnerable to such weapons. They can survive and accomplish their mission, however, if they make every effort to operate without being seen. Our unit's best protection is afforded by the terrain. It is, therefore, absolutely essential that maximum use be made of cover and concealment at all times. For example, here is what an enemy soldier can see through his sights if use is not made of the terrain. A perfect target to be picked off like a sitting duck. But if the terrain, cover, and concealment are employed, this is what the enemy can see. Almost nothing. This is 1st Platoon, Company A, 1st Battalion. It is the lead rifle platoon in the company's movement to contact. When moving to contact, the platoon moves in column, with each squad employing the wedge alignment by fire teams. The use of the column enables the platoon leader to maintain positive control of his squads. Movement of the platoon is oriented on the platoon leader, who, with his radio operator and forward observer, normally positions himself behind the lead squad and directly forward of his crew served weapons. From this position, he can best control the entire platoon, including the direction of movement maintained by the lead squad and employment of crew served weapons. The platoon sergeant normally travels at the head of the trail squad to assist the platoon leader in controlling the trail element. There are three techniques of movement traveling, traveling overwatch, and bounding overwatch. If contact with the enemy is not likely, for example, when moving in a secure area, the traveling technique is employed. This technique permits the platoon to move rapidly and continuously. When using the traveling technique, the platoon maintains a basic dispersion of approximately 20 meters between squads with each squad maintaining approximately 20 meters between fire teams and about 10 meters between each individual soldier. In order for the platoon leader to maintain positive control, intervals between squads and individuals may be reduced in extremely thick terrain. In open terrain, the intervals may be extended for better dispersion. When the likelihood of enemy contact is possible but not expected, a unit should move using the traveling overwatch technique of movement. When the traveling overwatch is employed, the distance between the lead squad and the remainder of the platoon is increased to approximately 100 meters. The lead squad uses traveling overwatch. The rest of the platoon uses the traveling technique and maintains a basic dispersion of approximately 20 meters between squads. This interval may be increased or decreased depending upon the situation. During this movement, the squad leader and the trailing fire team of the lead squad move about 50 meters behind the lead fire team, prepared to support it by fire or maneuver. This not only provides advanced security for the platoon, but assures that contact with the enemy will be made with the smallest element. The actual interval between the lead squad and the rest of the platoon is determined by the terrain and visibility. However, there must be visual contact between the platoon minus and the lead squad. The platoon minus should be far enough to the rear so it will not be endangered if the lead squad is taken under enemy fire, yet be capable of supporting the movement of the squad by fire or maneuver. When contact with the enemy is expected, the bounding overwatch technique should be employed. The basic pattern of bounding overwatch at platoon level is one in which all three rifle squads are dispatched alternately from the column to occupy overwatch positions. For instance, when the platoon leader determines that bounding overwatch is necessary, he dispatches the lead squad, in this case, first squad, to an overwatch position. Normally, 
This initial position is closer to the head of the column than the subsequent overwatch positions. Prior to each bound, the location to which a squad is to move must be pointed out in unmistakably clear terms by the platoon leader. I want you to bound your squad through that low ground and establish an overwatch position on the road junction over there where those row boats are on the hill. Whenever possible, clearly recognizable terrain features should be designated as the bounding objective. The platoon leader should also give each squad leader precise instructions so he will take the proper action after having accomplished his overwatch role without the need for lengthy subsequent orders. When first squad is in position, the platoon minus continues forward on a column axis. It does not move until the squad is in position to cover its movement. At the discretion of the platoon leader, second squad is directed to a subsequent overwatch position beyond first squad but along the same general axis of advance. When second squad is in position, the platoon minus continues forward. As it passes first squad, the squad rejoins the unit at the rear of the column. Upon approaching second squad's position, the platoon leader dispatches third squad to a further overwatch position. When third squad is in position, the platoon minus continues forward. As it passes second squad, the squad rejoins the unit at the rear of the column. This technique of bounding overwatch will be continued until the likelihood of enemy contact diminishes, or when enemy contact is made. second squad moves toward its assigned overwatch position, it is suddenly taken under enemy small arms fire. The men take cover and immediately return the fire. At the same time, the overwatching first squad opens fire. Victor 8-1, Victor 8-1, this is Victor 3-4, over. Victor 3-4, Victor 8-1, over. This is Victor 3-4, and receiving heavy fire from an estimated squad of five enemies, and I'm unable to advance, over. Right, Roger. Hold your position, keep out of the other fire. We'll contact you later. Out. Jones, come up here. The platoon leader now directs the mortar forward observer to request indirect fire support on the enemy position. I want you to get me some mortar fire across that valley on the hill. All right? Yeah, as quick as you can. The platoon leader now informs the company commander of his action. As second squad maintains its suppressive fires against the enemy, continues to support from its overwatch position. Now the 81 millimeter mortar section opens up with its end direct lines. Meanwhile, the two served weapons which have been displaced to the first squad's overwatch position, are placing suppressive fires on the enemy. This is how the platoon is now disposed. The second squad, taking advantage of cover and concealment, is returning enemy fire. The first squad, in its overwatch position, together with the machine guns and the third squad, are also placing suppressive fires on the enemy. Since the second squad cannot fight through the enemy resistance, the platoon leader decides to maneuver and attack the enemy from the left flank with the first and third squads. Under the supporting fire of the mortars, the machine guns, and the second squad, 
The platoon leader leads the first and third squads along a covered route to a location from where they can assault through the enemy, employing fire and maneuver. First and third squads assault the enemy. The machine gunners and the second squad shift their fires in advance of the assaulting elements. At the same time, the indirect fires of the 81 millimeter mortars are shifted beyond the objective. Any offensive operation depends, to a great extent, on the ability of the leader to maintain positive control of his unit and to minimize the effectiveness of enemy weapons. This can be accomplished by using maximum cover and concealment afforded by terrain and by employing the standard techniques of movement. With the enemy resistance eliminated, the platoon leader directs his crew served weapons and second squad to displace forward to his own position. Victor 8-1, I want you to move up to my position and consolidate. Out. Keep your gun in your hands up. Then the platoon leader reports to his company commander and prepares to continue on his mission. I'm on the enemy position and doing a uh, end accountability now. Out. Come on, Victor. Now, here are some of the major points to remember. Platoon uses three techniques of movement. When contact with the enemy is not likely, the traveling technique is employed. When contact with the enemy is possible, the traveling overwatch is used. The platoon minus should be far enough to the rear so it will not be endangered if the lead squad is taken under enemy fire. However, it must be capable of supporting by fire the movement of the squad. contact with the enemy is expected, the bounding overwatch is used. In applying the techniques of movement, the platoon leader must issue clear, specific instructions to his squad leaders. He must tell them where to go, how to get there, and what to do when they arrive. When contact with the enemy is made, a unit should attempt to maintain its momentum and fight through 
employing fire and maneuver to destroy the enemy and continue on its mission.